Okay, so you can see how simply that's going on. Um, it's a pretty simple technique. Just tap the brush on there like so. Um, you gotta be just careful not to disturb the paint underneath too much. So if there's, if you're going over paint that's already there and it's wet, you just need to be mindful that, you know, you don't want to disturb it too much. Get a couple up into here, a bit more. So I want to push those clouds back. That's my, you know, one of the big goals here is to get that cloud back into the distance. So. Okay, so that gives us a nice sort of canopy of uh, foliage here. And pop one just out there on its own, doing its own thing, just for balance. And I'll put in some more branches to support that in a sec. What we'll do now though, is take almost a pure yellow ochre. I'm gonna brighten it up with just a little bit of the uh, cadmium yellow. Okay, and so you can see that mix there. Just brightening it up a bit. And just in a few spots, I'm just going to apply where the sun might be. And this will, um, or where the sun might be, you know, touching on the, foliage there and this will just give it more dimension and a bit more volume okay so I've really gone just on this outside here, I've left these ones in the center and on the other side. If you were to put sunlight all over, I probably shouldn't have done that one so much, but that's gonna bring the eye sort of over there too much, which is what we don't particularly want. Um, I wanna control the eye so that it stays in this section here. Okay, now I'm just going back into um, smaller brush here. We need to get, obviously, some twigs and branches to support this. Yeah. Get a few into here. Okay, so just filling in some of those. Don't have to go overboard too much with those. And get a little bit of dark onto some of those as well. those branches. There we go, that's our little gum tree. Look, there's a huge amount of things we could do with the gum tree to really, um, you know, develop it. But as I said, this is really a um, beginner's um, painting that we're doing and I want to keep it to a relatively short time frame if I was doing this painting for myself you know or maybe to exhibit or something later on I'd be spending a lot more time you know on, on the painting and uh, getting in a lot more details and things like that um, than what we have time for here today however time does not permit this particular painting. Can put in some bark and things hanging off. Like so okay. One other thing, um, 
I think we need to put in some fence posts here just to brighten up this side. It's a little bit not much happening there. So I'm mixing up a dark with plenty of yellow ochre in there. Dark being our ultramarine blue, cadmium red and yellow ochre. Just onto the palette knife here. Getting a, a roll of it there. And what I want to do is come over the um, canola fields. So um, if I pick a spot there, and I'll just put it slightly on a lean and just pull it in like so. Probably not down as far enough as I'd like. Okay. One spot there. It's definitely not as down as far as I'd like. So I'm going to use the smaller edge of the um, palette knife now and just fix up that bottom. And get it down to about there. Okay. Probably need to have another one about here. And again, just extend that bottom down a bit there. And that starts to push now the canola fields back by having some fence posts. Now I'll do one that's sort of given up the ghost. Okay, it's um, done a bit of a lean because you know old farms and things. That's what tends to happen. Pop another one in here. Gets a little bit awkward sometimes with this easel. I must get a new easel, I think. Get that one in there. And this tree here, let's just get one leaning on an angle there next to that tree. Okay, so that gives us our start of our fence posts. And by doing that, it just creates a bit more depth in the painting. As you can see, the, the canola fields now are starting to get pushed back. The tree gets pushed back a, a bit because there's a fence post in front of it. It's just a good thing to, uh, to practice putting in. And um, we need to put some highlight colours on those trees and get some grass and things happening in there. So to do that, I'm going to pick up our fan brush and um, we'll just get some grasses happening in there. And I've just got some yellow ochre. And in, the, in these corners, we'll get a bit in there. It'll probably go a little bit redder with that mix. Yellow ochre and red, which we... Um, started to, well we put into here that more of a red colour. The reason why the red works, I think I said before, is because um, red colours bring things forward and the cool colours take them back. Okay, I'm just going to get some grasses happening in here. Probably going a little bit too much the same value as the path. It's not really showing through. So I'll just add in some more greens and whites in there a little bit just to break it up a bit. Okay. Now we need to get some highlight on those posts. Sorry, that one's broken. Where do I put this? Okay. We need to get some highlight on those posts. And we don't want too much highlight on there, but just a little bit. So I'm just using, again, yellow ochre and um, titanium white. And We've got the sunlight coming that way, so I'll pop it in over here. Just 
Just getting a little bit of colour onto there. Okay. A little bit random, but I think that's good. Um, you know, these are old fence posts, so it's going to be a bit random. Just getting a little bit of colour on the top of them. Like so. Now, of course, um, you could put in the uh, what we would call barbed wire here in Australia. I'm not sure whether that translates into the US or other countries. Um, hopefully it does, but just you know, basically why that for the fencing. Okay, but just do it subtly. You don't need to overdo it. In fact, in some ways, what I'm doing there is pulling out the paint that's already there. You don't want this too strong, the the barbed wire, because you don't want to stop the eye from going into the. Um, into the painting and do it a bit random, don't make it too neat, like so. And in front of the tree, okay. So where the tree is there, I've made that the stronger strongest part of the whole fence just to pop that tree back behind there okay okay well I think we're just about finished with this one um, obviously go in and pop our name I'll just get some cadmium red to sign it. I always tend to use cadmium red to sign all my paintings. Because um, I think there's nothing worse when you're at an art show and you like a painting but you can't actually work out who it's by. So I want my name to stand out so that people can work it out. So again, like putting a signature, like a really scrawly signature. It looks good, but not necessarily easy for people to work out who a painting's by. Um, you want them to be able to see who it is straight away. Okay. Now we do get um, a lot of hawks and things like that up the um, highway there, so I might just, off in the distance, just pop just a couple, um, maybe one over the yings there. They, they don't all sort of gather together, but I think that just makes a nice little addition to the sky area there. And you know what? I think that's pretty well finished painting. Canola fields over Lara with the Yu Yangs in the background there. Um, great little beginner demonstration painting for you. Have a go at it um, or come to one of our art classes where we'll be teaching this painting or join one of our online art classes where we teach basics of landscaping and seascape painting. Um, so yeah, drop by and have a go at this painting. Let us know how you've gone. And uh, drop by uh, freepaintingvideos.com and you get a whole series of free painting videos just like this uh, that explain different techniques and things to you. Um, so by all means, come and grab those and you'll learn even more about painting. Hope you've enjoyed it. Leave a comment. Let us know what your thoughts are and how you've enjoyed it. And uh, until I'll see you next time, happy painting.